Good morning, church family and friends. Welcome to our summit service today. Whether you are joining us in person or online, we are so excited you're with us. Before we get started, here are a few important announcements. Don't forget to join us today in between services in the gathering place for our ministry fair, where you will get to learn more about our amazing church ministries. You might even find a ministry that you and your family can enjoy together. So please stop by. Southwestern Adventist University is hosting a solar eclipse presentation by Dr. Jared Rice and Dr. Aaron Christian today at the Wharton Auditorium at 5 p.m. The university is also hosting a solar eclipse event on April 8th from 12.30 to 3 p.m. at the Thompson Observatory, which includes free solar glasses and food vendors. The total eclipse will be at approximately 1.40 to 1.44 p.m. While you're at the Solar Eclipse event, stop by the Keen Worship Choir tent and pick up lunch. You can purchase delicious veggie burgers, egg rolls, pancet, and moon pies. Let's support this ministry. Southwestern Adventist University Homecoming will be April 11th through the 14th. Check out the weekend schedule, honoree, and speaker info, and purchase alumni banquet tickets at swau.edu forward slash homecoming. It will be sure to be a homecoming to remember. Be sure to make plans to attend the Young Alumni Tailgate event as well. Southwestern Adventist University can't wait to see you. Mark your calendars, call or text a friend to plan on being here on Sunday, April 21st at 7 p.m. for a night full of praise and worship right here in our sanctuary with the talented contemporary Christian music duo, Shane and Shane. Admission is free, but seating is available on a first come, first serve basis. Come early, the doors open at 6.30 p.m. I look forward to worshiping with you. As we begin our time of worship, I wanna remind you that our Heavenly Father is a God of love, grace, and mercy. I encourage you to love, connect, and share. Welcome to worship.
Good morning, church family. Our scripture today is found in Mark 10, 46, 52. It says, Then they came to Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a large crowd, a blind beggar, Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road. That When Bartimaeus heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly rebuked him, telling him to keep still and be quiet. But he kept on shouting out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, telling him, Take courage, get up, he is calling for you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me regain my sight. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and began following Jesus on the road. Please stand as we sing our opening hymn, Blessed Assurance. This is my 
Happy Sabbath, friends. How are you today? Happy Sabbath. So good to worship together. So good to be together once again. Um, we have a couple items of church business as we continue worshiping together. We have a few um, uh, transfers in and out. This is our second reading uh, this Sabbath here today. So as you can see on the screen, we have incoming. We have Enrique Morales from Houston Magnolia Park. We have Nancy Pate from Lincoln College View. We have Tia Templeton from Orange Coast Church in Irvine. That's all coming in. And then moving on out, we have uh, John Grosbold to Waxahachie. I said it right this time uh, in Waxahachie, Texas. Then we have Carmen Marola to Joshua Spanish. And uh, so in first service, I forgot to do the vote. So we're not going to forget this time. Um, we, for those of you who are coming in, man, we want to say welcome to you. And those who are going out, we send you with love and with blessing. So can we have a motion for these transfers today? Perfect. In a second. Now, uh, can we just say, be blessed for those who are coming in and going out. Be blessed. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Next, we want to move into a, a time of worship in giving. And uh, to do that th today, this Sabbath, our, 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 our worship in giving is CMO. Now, CMO is just another uh, word for local church budget. And every time we have a CMO week, we like to highlight a different ministry here at the church. And so today, this week, we're, we're going to highlight our Great Stuff Thrift Store Ministry. And to do that, we have brand new general manager, Nick Barnett, joining us today. Nick. Hey. So glad you're here. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> An honor. Um, Nick is my friend and also uh, the new general manager over at Great Stuff. So if you go in there, you may just see him behind the desk. Nick, can you talk to us a little bit about, man, what is Great Stuff all about and what does it do for our community? Uh, there's two main ways that we directly impact our community. There's a lot of ways, obviously, that aren't as direct. Uh, but the two ways that we directly impact is we provide goods for people, great stuff, uh, for people at a very low price uh, to help people that uh, are looking for that. And then we also uh, use the funds from that, 100% uh, of the profit, goes toward directly helping people in need. So uh, I'll, the bulk of it is often for rental insurance or rental uh, assistance, and there's other kinds of assistance as well. Sometimes it's medical, depending on people's needs or whatever the case may be. It's often a case-by-case -case basis. And uh, so those are the two primary ways that we uh, intentionally impact the community here. In Beautiful. So everything you give to the Great Stuff Ministry goes to do all that, which is a lot. Um, can you talk to us also about how, how can we as a church get involved in helping great stuff? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of ways, actually, that you can get involved or that you can contribute. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is kind of the heart and soul of our ministry, which is our volunteers. Uh, we're always uh, looking for new volunteers, enjoying new volunteers. Uh, a lot of friendships get made between our volunteers and between our volunteers and the people that we get to help uh, in the community because uh, we have a lot of regulars. And so... Uh, volunteering is great. Uh, also, dona donating is great. If you have great stuff, we happen to happen to work in great stuff. If you have great stuff. Yeah. They want it. You're, you're th we're the right place. <laughs> so, uh, if, uh, so there's obviously that kind of donation, but also there's direct fund vo uh, donations as well. Whether that's for the building project or whether that's for the fund that is helping people directly. Um, and uh, obviously, we're always, we always appreciate prayers, and that's, that's also something that's very important to us. So, yeah. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Nick, for the ministry you're so you do welcome. over there. It's an honor. 
Beautiful, beautiful. Well, as we, uh, we give today, why don't we uh, bow our heads for a word of prayer as we send out our worship and giving today. God, we thank you so much once again today for all you've given to us. God, you're so, so good. You own the cattle on a thousand hills, and uh, you give to us freely. And so, God, today we give back to you, not out of obligation or fear and trembling, but out of thanksgiving and gratitude. And so, God, would you go with this offering now as it goes to do the ministry in this community? We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen. It is now time for our children's story. So we want to invite all the little, the small ones up, and uh, we'll move into our, our children's story. Good morning, everybody. I am so excited because my cousins just taught me how to play this new game. Oh my goodness, it's so much fun. And I actually have a friend that's gonna come and play with me. I wonder where she is. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Celesta, I'm, I'm so happy that you came. <laughs> okay, sit down, sit down. Okay. This is the game. Look, it's so fun. It's like the best game in the whole entire world. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see what's inside. Oh, the instructions. Psh, I don't need this. I know how to play. Okay, oh. so basically what you do is you get, you hold this board right here. Okay. Thank you. And then you hold this part, you hold this part here. And then we're going to play catch with it. But, yeah. Okay. to throw it at me. I don't think that's how it works, Sarah. Why don't you just read the instructions? Um, no, I don't need the instructions. I know exactly how to play. Um, okay. okay, yeah, you're right. That probably wasn't exactly how you do it. Okay, I think I'm supposed to hold the board game. And you hold the pieces. Okay. Okay, and then you throw it at the board game. I'll tell you where to throw it at, and you can see if you can hit it. Okay. <laughs> that wasn't much fun. I 
thought that was great. <laughs> Are you sure that's how you play? <sighs> okay, maybe not. Oh, oh, okay, you're so right. Okay, put this okay. on your head. Okay. Yeah, yeah, put this on your head. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to try. Wait, can you go to the back a little bit? Yeah, okay. I'm going to try and see if I can land it on your head. Ready? Uh, that didn't really work. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Sarah, you hit me. This is like the second. This game isn't fun at all. I don't I'm like sorry, it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, I promise it was Why so fun. Why can't you just read the instructions? This reminds me of what my mom was telling me last week. She was telling me that you need instructions for everything. You need instructions to play a board game. You need instructions to build a car. You need instructions for life. And she was also telling me that the Bible is basically a set of instructions. She read a memory verse to me. Do you want to hear it? I guess. Okay. It says, And observe what the Lord your God requires. Walk in obedience to him and keep his decrees and commands, his laws and regulations as written in the law of Moses. Do this so that you may prosper in all you do and wherever you go. In all you do. Oh, so the Bible is literally saying, read the instructions. Read the Bible. Basically. Oh my goodness. Wait, okay, wait. I have a question. Okay. So what if I'm feeling super scared? Is there a verse that you can read to help me? Of course. There's one that says, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Oh, my goodness. That would help me so much. What if, what if I'm feeling super sad? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. What? You have a verse for that too? Yes. Okay, wait. What if I make a mistake and I don't know what to do? There's a verse for that too. No way. Yep. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Oh my goodness. Well, I guess I need to read the Bible and read my instructions too. I think we're about out of time to play the game, but next time we hang out, we can play it. And, and you'll read the instructions? Yes, I'll read the instructions. Okay. Next time you guys are trying to play a game, what are you guys going to do? Read the instructions. Yay. Okay. Do I have a volunteer for prayer? Oh. You want to be? Thank you for this day. Thank you. So we have a great day. Thank you for South School. Thank you for church. We so bless you, dear God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Don't forget to get your Sabbath scribblers, guys. Hello everybody, our first song is Friend of God, so I would like to invite you all to stand.
may be seated. Our next song is Hosanna. be something that's been troubling you, I invite you as they sing one more time the chorus for you guys to come up front. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna.
I invite, I invite you to kneel with me. Dear God, thank you so much. Thank you for allowing us to be here in your presence. Lord, before we even ask for anything, we just want to come and accept the fact that we can stand before you because of Jesus Christ. So, Lord, for just a few seconds, we just want to feel your presence, Lord. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you for seeing us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being aware of everything that happens in our personal lives, Lord. God, we have so many things to praise you and thank you for, Lord. We can breathe. We can be here. We can feel the freedom of your grace. Lord, but we have so many other things to also ask for help. We have personal problems. We have personal struggles. And Lord, we just want to bring that up to you and we just want to ask you to help us manage. Lord, as small of a problem it might be or as big as it might be, Lord, we just want to bring it up to you. God, again, we thank you so much for everything you've given us, Lord. Thank you for the community. Thank you for the school that is represented here. Thank you for CTA, KES, Keen ISD, all the other schools around us. Lord, thank you for this church. Thank you for the pastoral ministry that the leaders are doing here, Lord. And Lord, thank you that we can openly come and praise you. Lord, bless the speaker today. Let us hear your words through him. Use him so we can learn something and be closer to you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Good morning, church. God is good? And all the time? Outstanding, outstanding. You all look beautiful today. Before we begin, I just want to acknowledge, um, first off, I want to thank Pastor Michael for inviting me to this platform. My name is Anthony Pinnock. I am the Regional Director for Mission and Ministry at Texas Health Hughley. Um, and it is, and I'm also a member of this church. But, but on top of that, on top of that, as I, as I, as I think, Pastor Mike, I want to just acknowledge the entire pastoral staff that we have here. They're absolutely amazing. And the way that God is working through them for this community and the community at large, and just the participation that we have as members of this church to be able to meet each other's needs as well as the community at large and participate in the great work of our Lord and Savior. I just got to say, outstanding job for all of us and what he is doing through us. If you all believe that, say amen. 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 There is a, uh, a question that is usually asked superficially, but it's really not a superficial question. It's as common as, hello, hi, what's up, happy Sabbath. It's almost a normal greeting. And this question that is asked is, how are you doing? I don't know how many times you've probably been asked that question today, just walking in to this building. How are you doing? How are you doing? Hey, you look good. How are you doing? Happy Sabbath. How are you doing? And we probably respond in the same way. I'm doing fine, doing well, too blessed to be stressed. Hey, <laughs> I can't complain. I can't complain, but if I could, I'd probably do me no good. God is good, doing well, doing fine. We meet a deep question with a superficial answer and we ask a deep question superficially. Because the question that's really being asked is not minor. I myself fall prey to it many times. Years ago, I asked one of my colleagues, and every time that I saw him, I would say, hey, I mean, good to see you, how are you doing? And his response was, only Jesus knows. I heard laughter. I did it too. <laughs> okay, all right. Our next encounter, I said, hey, how you doing? Only Jesus knows. But this time I laughed with a little bit of discomfort. I don't know where he's going with this. Our third encounter, hey, man, good to see you this morning. How you doing? Only Jesus knows. I, I, I didn't quite know how to take this response, but this third time really made me think because I realized, okay, hold on. Huh. In more conversation, well, yeah, let me know. I'm not doing good, but I can't say I'm doing bad. So I'm neither good nor, nor bad. I can't really assess. I, I don't know. Only Jesus knows how I'm really doing. <laughs> you see, this question is, is very deep because essentially what it's asking is, when I say, how are you doing? What I'm asking is, is, can I be a part of your life? Can I be a part of your story? Can I be a part of your journey? And when the question is asked to me, the question is, do I have the courage to say, I want you to be a part of what's going on with me. Will I be transparent? Will I be vulnerable? Will I be authentic and honest with this question? In our scripture today, Jesus encounters this same thing, and the Bartimaeus finds himself in the same situation of wondering... Am I seen? In Mark chapter 10, in our scripture today, 
Starting with verse 42, it says, Then they came to Jericho, and he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a large crowd. And a blind beggar, Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road, as was his custom. Oh, my goodness. I like how Mark puts this out there because Mark doesn't just say, hey, it was Bartimaeus on the roadside. He said it was the blind beggar Bartimaeus. If we were to really take an honest assessment of ourselves right now, and don't look to your neighbor to your left or to your right, but if we did an honest assessment of ourselves of what we struggle with, what we are working through right now, what would be the issue before your name? How would you be described? Lying Larry? Gossiping Gloria? If there's a Larry or a Gloria here, I apologize. (laughs) I don't mean you. But this is essentially what was taking place. Asking these questions. This is how we describe the person. You know, sometimes we still do it in community. They say, hey, you know that, you know that cheat, that thief? You know that guy? Which one? Jimmy. Jimmy who? You know, Billy's boy. Oh, 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 Billy's boy, Jimmy, the thief. Yeah, I know Jimmy. This is what they did with Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus, who, who, what Bartimaeus? You know, the blind beggar. Bartimaeus, Timaeus' boy. He was by the roadside. And what happened? Well, as I'm writing, Jesus was leaving Jericho. And Bartimaeus is on the roadside, and the crowd is following Jesus. This seems to be so fascinating to me, how a crowd who is walking with Jesus, following Jesus, talking about Jesus, is so oblivious to Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus has been sitting here, change, change, spare change, for quite a while. It was his custom. But Bartimaeus has now become background scenery. He's just there, common like the birds chirping in the trees. Heard them before, but sometimes we stop hearing the birds. It makes me wonder, are we really following Jesus if we can't see each other? How can we see God, but we can't see our fellow man? Henry Nguyen, in his book, The Wounded Healer, he says, Compassion is born when we discover in the center of our own existence, not only that God is God and man is man, but also that our neighbor is really our fellow man. You see, we can't truly follow God and see God if we can't see each other because God shows up in each one of us somehow, some way. But Bartimaeus notices he's in the background, he's not being seen. No one has probably stopped by and said, Bartimaeus, how are you doing today? No one's checked in with Bartimaeus today, last week, or probably for the last year, and Bartimaeus sits here blind, hearing a crowd go by. Did you hear about Jesus? Did you see what Jesus did in Jericho? Oh, it's amazing. Familiar voices, because he can't see them. He probably is wondering who's the... They sound familiar, but I hear the, the communication is about Jesus. Hmm. I wonder what's going on. I wonder what's happening right now. The Bible goes on to say, in verses 47, it says, When Bartimaeus heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, now we will read this and we'll say, Jesus, son of Nazareth, have mercy on me. Bartimaeus, the Bible says, he shouted, Jesus, son of David, Have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. It's different, isn't it? Jesus. When I was younger, 
my, pa- my father, you know, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a pastor, so I'm a, I'm a pastor's kid. And I remember uh, there was this lady at church. She would sit around this side, first and second row. And when he got down towards the end of his sermon, uh, she would stop and she would just break out from her seat. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is worthy. Praise his name. God is good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And it didn't matter if you sat by her, if you put your arm around her, if you tried to sit her down. (laughs) Didn't matter what she did. She was going to make sure that she sought Jesus. And Bartimaeus at this time is seeking Jesus. He is demonstrating shameless audacity. I don't care who's around. I don't care what they may think about me. I don't care what they may say to me. I'm calling for Jesus. And he says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Quiet, Bartimaeus. We're worshiping right now. Jesus, hush up, Bartimaeus. We're trying to be with Jesus. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible says, when Bartimaeus, that Jesus, Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called the blind man. He still is in Bartimaeus. They called the blind man, telling him, take courage, get up. He is calling for you. And throwing off his cloak, He jumped up and came to Jesus. Next verse. And Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, my master, let me regain my sight. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. And immediately he regained his sight and began following Jesus on the roadside. Henry Nguyen also goes on to say in his book, he says, who can listen to a story of loneliness and despair without taking the risk of experiencing similar pains in his own heart and even his precious peace of mind? In short, who can take away suffering without entering it? As I like to tell my chaplains who come through for education and training, I tell them, your ministry ends where your unresolved issue begins. In other words, if you are deeply grieving and you go to, the, to, the, to a call where somebody else has great loss, chances are your ministry may be halted. Because how do you walk with someone when you are in the valley yourself, deep, not making progress? You've just entered it and someone else has entered it. Who knows what progress looks like? The great illusion of leadership is to think that man can be led out of the desert by someone who has never been there. (laughs) You can't go in and bring someone out if you don't know the way out. But we ask, how are you doing? Are you doing well? Are you doing okay? You see, Bartimaeus heard Jesus, ran to Jesus, got healed, and now on the roadside follows him. And I'm sure, the Bible doesn't talk about this, but I'm sure he came across other blind beggars as he walked with Jesus. And maybe unlike the crowd, he probably stopped and said, hey, I've been there. I know someone. How are you doing today? And the blind beggar probably gave them an honest answer. <laughs> I had an experience. A few weeks ago, I went to a Dollar General. No, a family dollar. One of those stores. And while I was there, I, I, I've become acquainted with the workers that worked there. And, and while I was there, I had a mission. I was coming in to grab my stuff, 
and just get out. I think some of well, you will probably can relate, where you want to go into a place, get your stuff, get out, you don't want to have conversation, it's just... Well, I, I walked in that day not wanting conversation, and when I got to the counter to check out my stuff, I recognized that the cashier was checking my stuff out, just uh, didn't look quite the same as she normally did. And I said, man, something's a little off, but I want to get out of this store. And I decided to keep quiet while she kept quiet, purchased my stuff, and headed out the door. But before I could leave the store, I know me. I stopped and I said, hey, how you doing? I asked a superficial question. I didn't mean it for it to be deep. I asked it superficially, hoping for a superficial answer so I could leave. I said, how are you doing? She said, not doing good. Again, I know me. I can't walk away. I said, what's going on? She said, I just lost the father of my children. He passed away suddenly. He ate very well. He's been healthy. We haven't been together for years. He's newly married. He's, he's got a whole other family. But my children are hurting. I didn't ask, what do you want me to do for you? I just listened. And she said, can you come back here to the store around 3 o'clock? I said, for what? She said, I, my son works. This afternoon, I want to know if you'll check up on him. I come back that afternoon. I walk through the aisles and I pick up an item I don't really need because I need to find a way to have conversation. And I go up to the register and I look at him and I say, hey, how you doing? And he says, I'm doing all right. I'm now asking a intentional, deep question. And he responds with a superficial response. I said, your mom told me. And at that moment, he just looks and says, I'm not doing well. I'm not doing well. My dad, listen, I loved him. He passed away. We don't, it doesn't make sense to us. We're all in shock. But I have to be here. I have to work. And look at the line behind you. I just don't know. I'm drinking a lot. But I don't want to drink too much because I just don't want it to become a habit. I said, well, you know what? Pull back on that alcohol a little bit. But in the meantime, I just want you to know that I know and that I see you. He stopped for that brief moment. He said, thank you. We bumped fists. And he said, I got to get to this line, but I have a request of you. I said, what's the request? He said, will you come back and check up on me? Absolutely. I'll stop going to the other store. <laughs> and, I'll only, and I'll only come here, shop at this store here, just so I can see you. Here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. I, this what I, 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 want, I want you all to catch this. I asked her a question of how are you doing, and I entered into her story because she was authentic with me. But I also entered into his story. Why? Because of the fact that she brought me in to their entire journey. To ask this question, how are you doing, should never be superficial. It should always be met intentionally. So, I'm going to leave you with this quote. Henry Nguyen says in his book, experience tells us that we only love because we are born out of love. That we can only give because our life is a gift, and that we can only make others free because we are set free by him whose heart is bigger than ours. When we have found the anchor places for our lives in our own center, 
we can be free to let others enter into the space created for them and allow them to dance their own dance and sing their own songs and speak their own language without fear. When you ask someone, how are you doing? Have you created a safe space for them to enter and be authentic? So church, I ask you, how are you doing? How am I doing? Well, I'm neither doing good, I'm not doing bad. But thank you for asking. Only Jesus knows. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this Sabbath day, but Lord, we thank you for community. We thank you for this forever family. We thank you that of your sacrifice on the cross, because it told us that you see us. Now allow us to be able to see each other. Allow us to experience you more deeply. Allow your spirit to continue to walk and fall afresh upon us daily until we meet again. 
We love you. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. for joining us today in worship. We're glad that you are a part of the Forever family wherever you're watching from. And we're pretty excited because around here, it takes a village to make sure that you can participate in worship. Our team of volunteers works tirelessly week in and week out to plan what you see on stage and what goes on behind the scenes to make sure that it makes it to your phone, your living room, or wherever you're watching from. Today, we need your help. We can only do this because of the generous support of the Forever family. So if you'd like to continue to see the live stream ministry of the Keene Seventh Avenue Church grow, we invite you to give to media right here at the Keene Seventh Avenue Church. You can do this by following the link on your screen, going to AdventistGiving.org and clicking on the Keene Seventh Avenue Church in Texas. Thank you for your support. Thank you.